If it wasn't already bad enough that I should have been barred from doing predictions ever again, I did the uh, quarterfinal predictions and got one outcome correct. Now, in all fairness, one of those outcomes was actually just a jinx. I just predicted England to win 2-1. That way, France could win. Yes! Let's go, baby! Let's go! Allez, les bleus! Allez, les bleus! Allez, les bleus! All this time... All this time, I f***ing win! I win! But today is a, a new clean slate. The quarterfinal? What, what even happened there? I, I don't know. We're into the semi-final where there's two matches to predict and hopefully I don't jinx anyone this time. Today's sponsor is OneFootball. OneFootball allows you to follow your favorite leagues, teams, and even players. And with the World Cup currently happening, it's a perfect time to download the app. For anyone just getting into this sport, OneFootball is great if you want to check out the knockouts bracket to see results and who plays who going forward. Times based on location are listed as well, so you'll never miss out on any World Cup match. You can also see up-to-date statistics for each player in the tournament. You can download OneFootball for free through the link in the description or through the QR code shown on the screen. The first match of the semi-finals is today, and that would be Argentina vs Croatia. Argentina have reached this point by winning Group C, beating Australia in the last 16, and then beating the Netherlands on penalties in the quarterfinal. Lionel Messi is not only Argentina's best player currently, but also one of the best in the tournament. He scored 4 goals, assisted twice, he averages 3.2 key passes per game, the most of any Argentinian player, and also he has the most take-ons of any Argentinian player, with I believe 9. But don't count out Julian Alvarez, he's been pretty good for the Argentinians as well with his two goals in this tournament. Angel Di Maria should hopefully be a little bit more healthy. You know, he, he might last another 10 minutes instead of 5. But as an attacking midfielder or winger, he's been able to average 1.8 key passes per game. Rodrigo De Paul started out this tournament being absolutely awful, but he has looked a lot better as of recent. He averages almost 1.5 interceptions per game. As mentioned before in the last video, Enzo Fernandez is having a good tournament too. I believe he was the one who almost scored the winner for Argentina in extra time, but I, I could be wrong there, but he does have quite the cannon of a foot. Nicolas Otamendi is actually the best rated defender defender in this team. Great passing outlet as well with his 92 passes per game. Another defender that's had a good tournament, Marco Sacuna, who's had two tackles per game. Emi Martinez hasn't really been that great. It is actually kind of a funny stat. Argentina have by far the worst save percentage of any team in this tournament with 16.7%. However, this comes from a very, very small sample size and really shows off how good the Argentinian defense has been. But if this match goes to penalties, Emi Martinez will turn on God mode, so no worries there for Argentina. Now, ability and attributes is one thing, mentality is a completely different game, and I think Argentina really has that nailed down. This is a side that is extremely hungry for wins and will do anything in their power to make sure they win. They are the definition of house incarnate. When you have players like Nicolas Otamendi and Leandro Paredes, the man who <laughs> kicked the ball straight at the Dutch bench. But it's not even just them. Lionel Messi has not taken anyone sh**. But there is one thing that could hold back Argentina, and this has been weirdly something that I've been seeing from a lot of teams. The fact that they just keep inviting opponents back into the match. Argentina had a 2-0 lead or dominating. The Dutch had nothing for them throughout pretty much 70 minutes of the match. But then Argentina took their foot off the gas and the Dutch immediately got back into the match. Argentina cannot do that against Croatia because they will be punished even more. Speaking of Croatia, they have only scored six goals. There's not really anyone that's been clinical in front of goal, but there are a lot of options and Croatia will get the job done if needed, no matter what. The assist leader currently for Croatia is Ivan Perisic with two assists. Fullback Josip Juranovic has also been providing some creative threats. He's averaged 1.2 key passes per game. Then you have the midfield three, of course. Mateo Kovacic has averaged three tackles per game. Luka Modric is someone who can control the tempo and change it at any given moment. And he also has like a bird's eye view of the pitch with his vision. Marcelo Brozovic has not only been 
a great anchor. He's also been a fantastic outlet. An 88 pass success rate with 95 passes made per game. Then you go down to the defense that has been really strong throughout this tournament. Josko Gavardial, averaging 1.2 tackles per game and 1.6 interceptions per game. Dayon Lovren, though, has been turning back the clock quite like Nicolas Otamendi. He has 1.4 tackles per game and has been Croatia's best defender. Okay, maybe not best defender because we still have to talk about goalkeeper Dominic Livakovic. Phenomenal keeper in this tournament. If we were basing goalkeeper performances off of post-shot XG minus goals allowed, Dominic Livakovic is the best performing keeper in this entire tournament. As mentioned before, Croatia have a very strong defense and have been showing that throughout the entire tournament. And even if they do concede, they are phenomenal at chasing the game. They have already been 1-0 down before and come back twice in this tournament. They did it three times in 2018. And make sure you don't forget about their exceptional set-piece play. So Argentina versus Croatia. Now it's time to make a prediction. What is my prediction? Hmm, I... I'm not sure. It's a very close game here. I'm going to base this off of what we've been seeing throughout the tournament, and I'm going to go Croatia win in extra time 2-1 after Argentina go up 1. I'm sorry, I think this is the end of the road for Lionel Messi. Croatia seemed to convince me more than Argentina does, but I'm not counting out Argentina because that team has been improving quite like the French team of 2018. So, who knows? I could be proven wrong. I probably will be. Next up, we have France versus Morocco. How France got into this tournament, they defeated the World Cup curse, won Group D, defeated Poland in the last 16, and then, thank God, defeated England in the quarterfinal. Kylian Mbappe is arguably the best player in this tournament with his five goals and two assists. Olivier Giroud is not too far off, when it comes to goals at least, with his four. He's basically playing the same role he did in 2018, but now he can score. You have no idea how terrifying that sounds. Today I feel Antoine Griezmann has not really been having the best of 2022s, but for some reason he's just decided to become useful again. As a maestro, he has been absolutely killing it. Three assists in this tournament so far, and another 3.4 key passes per game. England had the anti Mbappe plan working, but they kind of forgot about Griezmann, who had two assists in that match. Aurelio Shuameni and Adrian Rabio have been a really good midfield duo. Shuameni has 1.6 interceptions per game, pretty much expected from the guy. He's a monster when it comes to defending. And he's also a very reliable outlet, averaging the most passes made per game for France. When it comes to defense, you have Rafael Varane. He's been a rock in the back. Dyer Upamakano, I kind of forgot to mention about him last time around. He has been that way as well. Not to mention, he too is a reliable outlet. He's actually made the same amount of passes per game as Aurelio Shuameni. He also makes 2.5 tackles per game. Teo Hernandez has been great in this tournament as well, but he did look quite shaky against England. And when it comes to Hugo Lloris, he is starting to show his age as well. He has been for a while, actually. When it comes to stats, he is just slightly below average in this tournament. When it comes to how France play in transition, they are the most dangerous, and obviously that makes sense. They have Mbappe. That being said, though, I don't think France are going to have that many chances on transition, because who are they playing? The team that have literally averaged the second least amount of possession. Morocco. How Morocco got to this point, they won Group F, then went on to defeat Spain on penalties, then they defeated Portugal in the quarterfinals. And mind you, they have only conceded one single goal overall in this tournament and not one in the knockouts. But finally, history has been made with Morocco going to the semifinals as they become the first ever African nation to reach this point at a World Cup. The current top scorer is someone who has actually proven me kind of wrong. Yusuf and Nasiri with his two goals. Although key player in this tournament has to be Hakim Ziyech, who has absolutely come alive. One goal, one assist, 1.2 key passes per game, and considering how much Morocco get the ball, that is very, very impressive. He's also been putting in the work for defense as well, totaling up to 245 pressures in this entire tournament. Midfielder Azadin Unahi has also been really good in this tournament, averaging one key pass per game and also 1.4 dribbles per game. He as well has been putting in the work for the defense, even more than Hakim Ziyech actually. 68 defensive pressures per 90, that's the third most in the entire tournament. Then there's also attacker Sofian Bufal, who has been nothing but a baller with his 2.4 dribbles per game. Sofian Amrabat, as I've said before, has been playing like 2018 in Golo Conte, making sure no opposition player ever feels 100% safe. Last game I was really impressed by Yaya Atiyat Allah. He grabbed an assist, made a tackle, and also had four clear. He's also a fullback, by the way, kind of forgot to mention that. But speaking of fullback, uh, defense. 
I'm kind of concerned about it. Morocco's defense has been undoubtedly one of the best in this whole tournament. Along with only conceding just one goal overall throughout the entire tournament, they have only conceded eight shots on target. But the problem is, it's not the abilities or the pressure or anything. It's actually the fact that Morocco have a, a few questionable players when it comes to injuries. Nayef Aguerd, I think, is actually confirmed out. I, I could be wrong there, but Roman Saiz, who has also been having a fantastic tournament, is very questionable at the moment. Replacement Jawad Al Yamik was very solid against Portugal, though. Finally, though, there's the goalkeeper Yasin Bono, a top five keeper in this tournament, 87.5% save percentage. Ahaha, uh -huh. uh. I, I know ball. I almost forgot Ashraf Hakimi. He has an assist in the tournament, is the best rated Moroccan player in this tournament as well, and he's been a monster in the back with 3.8 tackles per game and also 1.4 interceptions per game. Morocco's style sees low possession, but a very formidable defense. When it comes to attack, they're very direct, but not the kind of primitive direct. Usually, they're the most deadly on transition with their highly technical players, and more than likely we'll see a good bit of that, knowing that France will probably opt to have have more of the ball. So now predictions. Listen Morocco, I'm doing this for your own sake. I do not want to jinx this for you guys. So I'm gonna go 1-0 France. And alas, that is the end of the semi-finals predictions. I'd love to hear what you guys think down below. Also, compared to the quarterfinal where I just kind of did it last minute because I forgot to do it, I actually have some stats and notes here, so it's not as half-assed, so hopefully it was a little bit better. But of course, a massive shout out to all our patrons, including Janos Balash, El Favi, Miliway 9 Aldipu, Alex Rod, Ulta, Min Suomez, Araisan, Daniel Ortiz, Francisco Hernandez, Aishadow Ninja, Juan Leras, Miguel Munoz, Wendin Mintang, Return Fire, Rory Burns, Subscribe to Tenditem, The Motor Drive, Tomicus, Trevor Batson, Vanilla Mexican 17, Victor, Carlos Anaya, Chris Damaseno, David Dunn, Declan Malloy, Dominic Griffin, Emmett Shea, Louis, Joe Paricio, Jordan Clavett, MX Weeb, Nish, Patrick Barley, President Pulisic, and Unbroken Persona. If you'd like to join the Patreon, there'll be a link down below and up in the annotations. You can follow my Twitter if you want, follow my Instagram if you like, follow my TikTok, trying to get to 20,000 there, and of course, you can follow my semi-active Twitch. I'm going to probably do a watch along for at least one of the semi-final matches, so watch out for that. But until then, I'll see you guys.